Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to Internet Analysis, a series where I analyze things from the internet. I have talked about a lot of topics over the past few months, and today I want to talk a little bit about Coachella. With every festival season beginning and Coachella's two weekends, we get a lot of Coachella content from influencers, including YouTubers, and then we get kind of anti-Coachella content because people like to, you know, either joke about not going to Coachella or missing out on it or not being interested in Coachella, whatever. No Coachella. But in addition to that, we also get the resurgence of the question, is Coachella anti-LGBTQ+. Every year, these articles resurface and we touch on this topic again. I think most notably on YouTube this year, this topic has resurged because of Haley Pham, who announced that she was not going to Coachella because of this exact issue. I started noticing a lot of comments saying, oh my gosh, please do not go to Coachella. The founder supports anti-LGBTQ foundations. I don't want to support someone who is just going to be funneling that money into like an anti-LGBTQ foundation. So obviously to anyone who is not anti-LGBTQ, this would be problematic. You don't want to support a corporation or a company or a festival that is against LGBTQ people in any way. But in this video, I want to examine exactly what that means because I think there's nuance to it. I think when people try to research this question, it can get a little bit dicey because it's not like Coachella itself is funding anti-LGBTQ organizations. But as always, we have to look into the leadership, the owners, the investors of corporations and brands and businesses to see where ultimately a lot of the profits may end up. By the way, this video is probably going to be a little bit heavy, but hopefully interesting. But later this week, I would like to make another Coachella related video, much more lighthearted, probably just making fun of the first world problems that influencers experience at Coachella. Coachella is their heaven and hell. And I think it's fun for the rest of us to kind of laugh at it. So let's jump right in. The man at the center of the Coachella controversy is Philip Onschutz. He is worth about $12 billion. And according to Forbes, over five decades, Philip Onschutz has built fortunes in oil, railroads, telecom, real estate, and entertainment. His Onschutz Entertainment Group operates more than 100 arenas and concert venues worldwide. His entertainment group, AEG, is second behind Live Nation in terms of entertainment and concert venue owners, leaders, put honors. So like a good uh, journalist, I was reading through Philip's Wikipedia page. Honestly, a great place to find information. What can I say? So like I mentioned, he is a billionaire. He, as of March 2017, was ranked as the 38th richest person in the United States. And he has invested his money in so many different industries. He co-founded the Major League Soccer Organization, as well as multiple teams. He also owns stakes in other sports teams and venues, including the Staples Center. And through AEG Live, he owns the Coachella Valley Music Festival. So he's a billionaire, gotcha. Next thing you need to know is that he is a very conservative Christian and that is relevant because obviously a lot of the groups that he funds, the organizations that he funds are also conservative and or Christian. So obviously being conservative or being Christian is not itself a problem, but conservative groups are almost always anti-LGBTQ based on their biblical principles. They are usually pro-life. And obviously we're not here to argue about those issues, but the question is, if you wanna to go to Coachella, but Coachella puts money back into Anschutz's pockets, and then he uses that money to fund Christian and conservative organizations, and those organizations are anti-LGBTQ+, are you directly or indirectly funding those anti-LGBTQ initiatives? That's the problem. Let me read some specifics about some of the organizations that he has donated to. In 2017, Anschutz Foundation gave $63.7 million to charities in the form of 900 donations. It was revealed that $770,000 in donations were made to at least seven groups that have been accused by gay rights organizations of making anti-LGBTQ statements in the past. That includes $200,000 to focus on the family, which is considered anti-LGBTQ because of its opposition to protections against discrimination, and $50,000 to Dare to Share, a ministry run by anti-gay pastor Greg Steer. So here's an example uh, from Greg's website, how to help our teens deal with LGBTQ issues, in which he says, 
Satan leads the ultimate hate group, an army of demons. He and his hate group want to keep these struggling teenagers in the chains of same-sex attraction and gender identity confusion. So we must help them break those chains through Christ. Classic. So obviously, as I said, his foundation donates to a lot of different organizations, but again, they tend to be aligned with conservative and Christian values, which again, very commonly are anti-LGBTQ, are against abortion rights, etc. So the interesting thing is that he has tried to deny that he is against LGBTQ people. He has responded to these reports by saying, neither I nor the foundation fund any organization with the purpose or expectation that it would finance anti-LGBTQ initiatives. And when it came to my attention or the attention of the foundation, that certain organizations that we funded have been supporting such causes, we have immediately ceased all contributions to such groups. Basically, he's trying to say he was unaware that these conservative Christian organizations were anti-LGBTQ, which is just pretty laughable because it's a pretty central part of a lot of conservative values and Christian faith values. So it's like, I don't buy it. I think now that there is outrage against that, people don't want to fund Coachella and fund that indirectly. I think he's trying to cop out of it somehow. So in addition to funding organizations, Anschutz has also contributed a million dollars to conservatives during the 2016 US elections, including pro-life and pro-gun candidates, and $200,000 to Republican politicians and political action committees, during the 2017 elections. So in regard to him saying that he no longer funds any anti-LGBT organizations, he's still funding anti-LGBT Republicans. In 2018, he donated 134,000 to Republican candidates, party groups, and political action committees. Republicans naturally support Trump's desire to ban trans people from the military and to roll back state and federal LGBTQ anti-discrimination protections in the name of religious freedom. So again, I cannot buy the fact that he's saying that he no longer supports anti-LGBTQ organizations because he's still supporting them politically. He's a billionaire. Billionaires tend to be conservative. They tend to be Republicans. Either that maybe when you get that much money, you just get more conservative, or maybe you just want your tax rates cut so that you don't have those billions taken away from you in tax revenue. Or perhaps you're just better at, mm, I don't know, taking advantage of people and or the system and reaping the benefits, so to speak, of our American economy. But that's not the point. <laughs> The point is, regardless of whether it is organizations that are Christian or Republican candidates, there are all the same values. They're against gay marriage, they're pro-life, pro-gun, whatever, conservative values. The interesting thing is, in 2018, he donated a million dollars in support of the Elton John AIDS Foundation. And along with his donation, he said this, my gift to the Elton John Foundation is intended to emphasize that we support freedom of all people to live their lives peacefully, without interference from others. I support the rights of all people and oppose discrimination and intolerance against the LGBT community. I see this as a matter of basic human rights. Again, I'm like, that sounds nice. Thank you for the donation of a million dollars to the Elton John AIDS Foundation, but it's just inconsistent. And that appears to be the only notable donation that is, you could say, pro-LGBT. But also, obviously, AIDS and HIV are not just an issue within the LGBTQ community. It's an issue for everyone. Also, as Billboard noted, AEG is involved in promoting Elton John's three-year farewell tour, and the musician has a long history with AEG. So this donation cannot definitely be interpreted as a purely wholesome blessing to the LGBT people. It's just kind of business mixed with, honestly, like a good PR moment, in my opinion. Okay, moving on. So clearly, this man and his massive fortune, they like to give money to conservative and Christian organizations. So what do we do about it? A lot of people have suggested boycotting Coachella. If you support LGBTQ people, if you support the community, why would you want to fund a festival that's gonna end up bringing some of those funds to anti-LGBTQ and other conservative movements? I'm all for people voting with their dollar. I think it's very important to be aware of where our money goes. But that being said, it can be very tricky, obviously, with these giant conglomerates. The baby company can seem okay, but the parent company may be evil 
evil or be funding something that you don't agree with. So it can make it really difficult to ensure that like the money you spend all the way up to the top is clean, I guess, in the sense that it doesn't go against your own personal values. That being said, should we only ever financially support or even try because it would be difficult to support businesses or corporations that completely align with our values. Because as I said, uh, Anschutz is a big investor and he owns and invests in a lot of different businesses, including the Regal Entertainment Group and along with Coachella, Golden Voice, which is part of AEG, runs other festivals, including Panorama, Firefly, FYF, and Camp Flogna. AEG's massive live entertainment division has promoted tours by the Rolling Stones, Kanye West, Paul McCartney, Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, Elton John, and Bruno Mars, to name only a handful. So it's like, in a sense, boycotting Coachella to try to prevent your dollars from going to this man is only the very tip of the iceberg because his business interests are so widespread. And that's the unfortunate thing. Again, I respect people wanting to vote with their dollar and wanting to not give their money to people who are gonna support causes that they don't agree with. But it's like, you would never even know when you're supporting all of these other organizations or artists that some portions of those profits are also gonna lead back to this man. Because of the size and scale of AEG's assets, if you go see a touring act of almost any popularity in the United States, you're probably giving AEG your money. So the question remains, if you would still like to boycott Coachella, which totally valid, I also think there would be other reasons to not make Coachella your festival of choice. I mean, there are so many festivals these days. Uh, so why not look into some others who are maybe better at being, you know, allies or being supportive, being inclusive for the LGBT community or women or people of color. There are so many causes that you can seek out and try to find festivals that support those causes. For example, I was reading about more inclusive festivals and apparently Lightning in a Bottle is a very good one. Of course, it's a slightly different kind of music, but festivals are all about the vibe, right? My foot's asleep. This is a, every time I film a video, it's so painful. So another Coachella and Philip Anschutz related question is, if a festival like Coachella promotes LGBTQ plus artists, because there have been more and more gay, queer artists featured at Coachella, if they promote those artists, does that good kind of outweigh or potentially just neutralize the bad in him personally and in his foundation funding these anti-LGBTQ organizations? It's just a question, you know? I don't know if it's possible to really like quantify it, but I guess it would just be a personal decision because tons of LGBTQ plus people attend Coachella and a lot of allies attend Coachella. A lot of the artists are either LGBTQ themselves or their allies, so it's like, is supporting those artists at the festival ultimately a good thing? Or should you just support them in other ways? I don't know. The thing about Coachella is that it's such a major festival. It's probably the most well-known music festival currently. And not just for music, like culturally, it is like an event. Every year it's Coachella season, which is why I can somewhat understand why prominent celebrities, influencers, and artists want to go to or perform at Coachella because it's like, it's Coachella. Also, as an artist, speaking out against just one festival, such as Coachella, could ensure that you couldn't get booked at any of the others, or worse, at any of the company's venues across the world. And again, we talked about how far-reaching AEG is, so this is definitely another angle that makes a little bit more sense as to why people, especially artists, are still going to Coachella and performing there. But continuing on this pathway of potentially boycotting companies that fund things that we don't believe in, let's talk about Chick-fil-A. Here's something spooky. Look at Coachella and look at Chick-fil-A. Are they the same thing? I don't know what I was trying to go for there. I just found it really spooky that the letters are similar, I guess. <laughs> No, but really the initial connection was obviously for years, a lot of people and cities and universities and stuff have been boycotting Chick-fil-A because Chick-fil-A is known to be a very Christian company. We all know they're closed on Sundays, but their owners have also been accused or have been proven to support anti-LGBT organizations as well. So again, I think it's really important to have some nuance in all of these conversations and just dive a little deeper and then make personal 
small decisions about what we are okay with supporting financially, directly or indirectly. Contrary to the company's latest claims that it has no political or social agenda, newly released tax filings show that in 2017, the Chick-fil-A Foundation gave more than $1.8 million to a trio of groups with a record of anti-LGBTQ discrimination. The donations, $1.6 million to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, $6,000 to the Paul Anderson Youth Home, and $150,000 to the Salvation Army actually represent a slight increase from the previous year. So I looked at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Statement of Faith page, and right on there it says, we believe God's design for sexual intimacy to be expressed only within the context of marriage and marriage is between one man and one woman. If marriage is only between a man and a woman and sex is for marriage, then there's no room for LGBTQ plus people or their sexual lives or, or them being married. Again, I'm not here exactly to argue about Christian beliefs, but it's just like, I don't understand how an organization or a person who says that they're all about Christian values can also try to say that they're not anti-LGBTQ even though they are. It's like, I'm not against you. I just believe that you and your lifestyle are sinful and have no room within my faith, but hey, nothing personal. So that's one thing, an organization just simply not supporting or being against LGBTQ people is one thing, but there also are organizations that actually actively fight against LGBTQ people, such as conversion therapy. For example, going back to Philip Anschutz um, and some of the foundations that his foundations or he himself have supported financially. The National Christian Foundation funds a lot of the groups aggressively working to chip away at the equal rights of LGBT Americans. The Family Research Council, which expressly says on its website that it believes that homosexual conduct is harmful to the persons who engage in it and to society at large, has been deemed an extremist group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. There you go. Again, this still leaves me with a lot of questions. I think it is awesome for people to vote with their dollar and not want to support organizations or people that end up funding causes that they don't believe in. Um, but again, I think it is a lot more complicated than we tend to express. You know, it's it's a nice thought, I guess, a nice gesture to boycott Coachella or Chick-fil-A, for examples. But it's a little bit tough to be, I would say, consistent in that because it's not just Philip Anschutz or it's not just Chick-fil-A that ends up supporting these Christian, conservative, anti-LGBTQ organizations. There are so many more companies and organizations and brands that are affiliated with, funded by, or owned by other conservative groups. And that's just one thing, you know? I mean, I don't know, we see this on the opposite end as well. We've seen conservatives boycott Nike because of Nike's support of Colin Kaepernick and therefore Nike's support of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I kind of just feel like these product or company boycotts can be kind of temporary, which is unfortunate because I think that they can be very powerful, but I think that sometimes they can be like trendy in the moment, but then people either forget about it or lose passion for that interest and maybe end up going back to Chick-fil-A or going to Coachella because it's Coachella. Anyway, I hope this made sense. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It is a, an interesting conversation. Do you think that there's anything that we can do like as consumers or people to be more aware? I mean, can we really expect people to like Google all the way down the line every product that they ever buy? I don't know. I think increasing public awareness of these things is important because I'd rather have people be informed so that they know where their money may be going indirectly. Hello? But as always, at the end of the video, my brain is mush and I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Stay tuned for my next videos and subscribe for more internet analysis content. Thank you for watching. Oh, follow me on Instagram for some mediocre pics. Sorry, no Coachella outfits, just the same outfits I've been wearing for years, always. Okay, thanks, bye.